Let's begin with the foundation of our take home assessment, the network layer. As an interviewer, I'd want to see for a project like this, a lightweight, extensible network layer. If a candidate used something like Alamo Fire, I take it to suggest they're just unfamiliar with URL session, which would be a red flag. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Next, let's consider how we should organize our endpoints. We know that generally speaking for these take-home assessments, the endpoints we'll be using are performing pretty basic CRUD operations. So we can keep our endpoint model pretty simple and start off with something like this. We can go ahead and define a protocol endpoint that has five properties that we need. The first property, the scheme, will tell us whether or not the endpoint we're using uses HTTP or HTTPS. Then we can define the base URL and then we can define the path. And the path is after the base URL that specifies the exact endpoint we're trying to hit. Next, we can provide an array of URL query items for parameters like an API key, but this could always just be an empty array if we don't need this field. Finally, we have a variable for the method which helps us specify what HTTP method we need for this particular endpoint. With this infrastructure in place, let's try and define an actual endpoint. In this case, Flickr search results endpoint. Remember that in Swift, enums can implement protocols just like structs and classes. So we can create a Flickr endpoint entity that implements the protocol endpoint we defined earlier. Now for every new endpoint we want to support, we can just introduce a new case to the enum, which will force us to handle it in the code below, helping us prevent unintended states. Additionally, it doesn't always mean we need to write a lot of new code because we can rely on the default case for an enum like we do for the base URL. We can only make changes to the part of the endpoint requests that change and let everything else defer to the default implementation. Another point to mention is how we might store our API key if the project requires it. I think that for a take home project, it's totally fine just to include it in the project in plain text but you should mention either through a comment or in the interview itself that in the real world implementation, you prefer a much more rigorous authentication flow and that including the API key in any capacity on the client is inherently unsecure. At this point, we have a standard for defining an endpoint in a readable and extensible way of adding additional endpoint requests to our application. Let's now take a look at how it would make the network request itself. Nowadays, I tend to avoid using libraries like SwiftyJSON and prefer just to use codables. And from an interviewing standpoint, the interviewer is probably looking to see that you've got a good, strong grasp on the functionality that Apple gives you and endorses. So let's go ahead and define some models. As you can see, they all implement the codable protocol and are derived from looking at the JSON the Flickr API sends back. Generally, you'd want to split these out into their own respective files, but for the video, I'll leave it like this. A few things to note here, we're making them structs because we want our models to be immutable. We don't want to accidentally change their values elsewhere in the code without realizing it. The reason we're creating these codable models here is our interaction with our API endpoints will likely be sending or receiving some JSON object. So we can think about that communication as transacting with codable objects which means our network request can be generic functions operating on codables. Now we're finally ready to get to the network engine. First, we create a function called request that operates on codables. It takes in something that implements the endpoint protocol and it returns a completion block with a codable object if the network request succeeds or an error. Next, we build our URL by assigning our endpoint properties to a URL components object. Third, we have a check to make sure that the URL was constructed without issues and is not nil. Fourth, we use our URL object to create a URL session and we set the HTTP method. Fifth, we get a reference to URL session and define our data task. In the closure, we handle the case of getting the data correctly, grabbing the HTTP response and handling the error. Step six, after some basic error handling and validation, we try and convert the data from the response into the expected codable object, T in this case. Step seven, if this all succeeds, we provide that value in the completion block through the results enums associated values. If it fails, we create an error definition and pass that back instead. And finally, 
calling datatask.resume actually triggers the network request. Let's go ahead and put everything together. We can go ahead and create the network engine's request call. We can go ahead and provide Flickr response as the codable object we want to get back. And now we can provide the specific endpoint we want to hit along with any parameters we want to pass in. So now if we go ahead and run this, we should eventually see a print statement with our responses. And you'll note here that these are the codable objects that we hoped to get back, as is everything else included within this array. Now we have a lightweight, reusable network engine that operates on codables. And this is a network setup that I've used quite often in personal projects that I've done. In the following videos, we'll take a look at how we would build out the UI for this, the image views that can load their own images asynchronously, and how we would define our caching layer. So stay tuned for those next videos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, uh, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.